Hello. Martins. Yes. So, how to make great art. Mm. Let's uh, start with something important then. What do we mean by great art? What do we mean by great art? It's a great question because art is so loose, it's so subjective. I find that for me personally, great art is collaborative. It invites other people to, to visit, to witness something that you've created in your own head, in your imagination, and it feels like a shared experience. So for me, great art is a shared collaborative experience between yourself and others. And there are obviously many, many different platforms for art or mediums. What about your own relationship with art, your, your background? When, when did you have an interest in acting or any other art? So I lived in Greece for five years from the age of two till seven. And I was introduced to drama by doing a play. I'd done a play called Little Red Riding Hood. And in Little Red Riding Hood, I played a tree. That was my role, a tree. And so that was my first introduction to acting. <laughs> um, Did you do well as a tree? I, I, was, a, I was a fantastic tree. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was my first introduction. And I never, th I never thought anything about it. I just, I just carried on being a child and, you know, playing. And, and then all of a sudden, that curiosity, that playful nature, I kind of retained. Yeah into my adult years, and then I ended up here. It, it all stemmed from the tree. It all stemmed from the tree, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what about more traditional art? Um, are there any, well, actually, it doesn't have to be traditional, but I wondered if there were any pieces of art from any form that had really affected you profoundly or that you always go back to. Yeah. Uh, I saw a production, a theater production of The Brother Size, which was written by Terrell Alvin McCraney. And I remember going to see this, uh, I think I was 15 or 16. And it was three black men on stage exploring what it means to be a man, what it means to be masculine, what it means to be feminine. You know, there was um, a great sense of brotherly love and support which oftentimes you don't see, especially growing up in my, where I grew up, there was a lot of bravado, there was a lot of tension between young black males. So to see that on stage and to see that done so beautifully gave me a sense of hope, gave me a sense of like um, wanting to be a part of that, you know? And it changed my perspective and, on how I relate with my friends and how I, how I show up for my brother or how I show up for my sister. Um, yeah, it just, it just gave me that sense of being a whole rounded human, you know. And what about yourself? Has, has there been a project um, that you're proud of that you've created yeah. above all else? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, in 2014, I did a show called Lion Boy which is a theatre production, and we did a tour, an uh, international tour. And the end of the tour, we ended up in South Africa. And in South Africa, the company was making no profit from the show. It was um, like a, um, how do you say, it? like a love project. Like we did it because we felt it was important to take the story to Africa, passion. a passion project. Yeah. So I remember doing our opening night, doing the show, and then coming out to take a bow, and the whole audience was filled by eight-year-olds, eight to 12-year-olds. Right. It was, came from school, it was like a school trip. And they all stood on their chairs, and they were shouting like this. And, um, no pressure. <laughs> and uh, it clicked for me. I, I, you know, it felt like this is why I do it. This is why yeah. I, I'm an actor. This is why I'm here, because we're responsible for the younger generation. We're responsible for the, the, um, giving them the impression that yeah. it's possible. Like they can, they can also be on the stage or, you know. And also there, were, there was also a language barrier. A lot of them didn't speak English. 
but they still felt a connection. They were still able to connect with the character and, and that's what's beautiful about acting because it's not always about what you hear, but, but it's about what you feel. And I think that's what, that's what connects us, you know, as actors, as the audience, is how we collectively feel. That's why I say great art is collaborative because yeah. it's about that collective energy. Like we're all here today, we're on a stage, you guys are here, but we, it's a collective energy. And, I, and that's what I love about what I do. And do you know that when you go into a project, do you have a feeling that, this, you know, we've got a good one here? Like, do you think w this is going to really reach people or um, this is going to be massive, like right, right. one other project you did, which we'll come to in a moment? <laughs> um, right. do, do, you, do you have a sense of that when you're working on a project? No, I, I, I approach projects with no expectations, no assumptions, you know? I, I'm employed to do a job. I come in, I do a job, and I'm not responsible for how it resonates with other people, you know, because I can't control that. I can't control how other people receive what I give. So I have to let that go, you know, and, um, and, and it's nice because when I approach it that way, there's the possibilities are, are yeah. huge because I don't limit myself to trying to create this thing that hopefully people will like. You know, I just do what I, f what I feel is true yeah. to me. And then if it resonates, it resonates. If it doesn't, then, you know. Uh, and obviously I mentioned Bridgerton a moment ago <laughs> when I talk about a project. But yeah. Did, did you know, like at what point did you realize this is, this is quite big, isn't it? Like what, <laughs> what was that uh, like? <laughs> that was on Christmas Day. So when it came out on Christmas Day, that's when I, I was like, okay, this is, this is huge. <laughs> This is something special. Yeah. Um, I mean, I kind of knew when we were filming it because everyone was so, everyone's heart was in the right place and we just wanted to great, create good work. Yeah. But I didn't know it was going to have such a global, um, you know, global takeover. I didn't know that, I'll, I, you know, I didn't know that I'll be in places like St. Martin, one of the smallest islands in the Caribbean and people will recognize me. You know, or people would say that they watched Bridgerton. I didn't know that that was going to be my life, you know. So um, you just never know. Yeah. You just never know. Yeah. But it is your life now. <laughs> um, what's the best piece of advice you have ever received? Or, or does a piece of advice stick out uh, in your memory uh, in your career? So a piece of advice that sticks out for me is um, it's from my mum, actually. So my mom says, anything worth doing is worth doing well. Otherwise, don't do it at all. So my mom always says that every day. She was like, if you're going to do something, do it well. Otherwise, don't do it. Um, and that's something that stayed with me. So when I approach the work or, I, you know, when I interact with people or when I decide to do something, I always make sure that I come to it wanting, it, wanting to do well. And... In a world where there are a sort of infinite number of distractions, I mean, take Web Summit, for example, every, every yeah. you walk through the pavilions and it's vast number of distractions. If, if you're an artist, whatever your art form in that, can, can that be quite difficult to concentrate on creating content when there are so many other things you can do? Yeah, I, I, I think we live in a microwave era where everything is just churned out you know, um, and things, you don't get enough time to really absorb things anymore. Like before you'd go to an art gallery and you walk around for like two hours and look at a painting for like half an hour. You know, now it's like you, you flick through your phone and you know, you take things in that two seconds, yeah. you know? So um, I think it's difficult because there's a pressure on people to just get content out. So sometimes people are not thinking about the impact the content has, yeah. you know? It's just it's similar to the media, you know? The media is just about getting the news out. There's no, um, there's no sense of the impact it might have on communities or other people. So I think, I think it, it's good to be mindful of that. Okay. You know? So it, it's striking that balance between volume on one hand yeah. and that passion project like you mentioned yeah, yeah. earlier. But also with the passion projects, I, I find that because of all the streaming networks now, you have Netflix, you have Amazon, I feel like there's not that pressure to, to do that big blockbuster film. Right. Because before, you know, a blockbuster film would come out once in a year. 
now we have so much, yeah. so many films, right? So I feel like as an artist, you can create work and people are going to find it. So right. you don't have to worry about it being like, you know, number one box office. That's the reverse of the tech problem. It, that's actually to, its adva to your advantage. Yeah. Say, there are so many different ways to right. reach people. Because people say build it and they will come. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, creative arts, hugely rewarding space in which to work. You, you're, you're very grateful for that. Um, but it does bring challenges, perhaps like other industries don't. Um, how do you look after your well-being in such a pressurized industry? Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. Um, I think well-being and mindfulness is so important, especially in this industry where you are very vulnerable. As creators, we're very vulnerable. We put a piece of ourselves out for the world, for people to comment, to people to judge. And um, it's important to be able to um, keep the family close. And when I say keep the family close, um, I don't necessarily mean like your mom, your dad, but like people who make you feel human, you know? People who make you feel like you are you, not just an idea of other people's perceptions of who you are. So I think it's good, it's good to find that circle of people. Uh, also, I think it's good to know that you can always return home. Like what is your home? What is your, your comfort, your, your space? Find that space for yourself and know that you can always go there, you know. It would be remiss of me at this point when we're talking about health, not to mention uh, physical health and right. your regime for the, the boxer in, uh, Will, in, in Bridgerton. Yeah. What, what, what was that like, getting in that kind of yeah. condition? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so when I got the part in Bridgerton, they gave me a personal trainer. And they were like, you have to get in shape. So um, I worked with a uh, personal trainer called Kung. And he put me through a vigorous regime. And there was a lot of calisthenics. So a lot of body weight, um, a lot of strength and conditioning, a diet, you know. But this was all about the discipline. This was about the, having that discipline as, a, as an actor. Um, but at the same time, not being obsessed with it. So it didn't get in the way of my, my, my work on set. Do you know what I mean? So I still came to do a job, but at the same time, I wasn't obsessed with how I was looking, you know? Um, so I think that's important to find that balance because sometimes you could be so obsessed about how you look and the image you want to give to the audience that you forget about the, the acting, <laughs> forget about the storytelling. So I think the storytelling is always the main character. So always go back to the storytelling. I think the consensus is the regime worked anyway, <laughs> in, case, in case you were uh, wondering. Right. Can it be difficult, and, I, I, you know, and this comes at, at different points in people's careers, but can it be difficult for an artist, or an actor, uh, to deal with criticism? Mm. And, um, and I'm thinking particularly in an age of social media yeah. where that can come from all angles. How does one deal with that? I think, you know, as artists, we, like I said earlier, we're very vulnerable. Like, we put a piece of ourselves out there. And I think I'd like to say to thy own self, be true. You know, so whatever you've put out there, knowing that it's come from a good place, knowing that it's come from a, you know, a mindful place, and everything else is just, a distraction, <laughs> you know? There's so much distraction out there. People will comment on anything, anything now, nowadays. So I think you have to be able to be truthful to the work, put it out there, and allow it to be, allow it to, you know. Are you quite structured with it? Do you kind of keep off social for a while and then go on, or yeah. you, you yeah, 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 do yeah, your yeah, yeah. I have to take breaks from social media. It's very important, it's very important, yeah. Yeah, and what about cynicism from, from those around you when, when you were sort of yeah. uh, developing your, your craft and, and, and your art. Did you have a lot of support from friends and family or yeah. did you have, I'm thinking, friends who maybe didn't get it? Yeah. Um, there were some friends who didn't get it. There were some friends who didn't understand that my life has changed and I may not be able to go certain places or may not be able to attend certain events. And, um, so that was difficult to adjust. 
But at the same time, there were friends who were very protective of me, who gave me space um, and left the door open. So I was always able to, to visit, you know. Right. Um, so I never felt like I was closed out, even though, because I shoot for eight months in a year. So that's a lot of time away from friends and family. So I, it's important to have friends who understand that. Mm. You are able to still be your close friends and family, but understand that you, you might need to go away for long periods of time. Going back to the, the, the title question of the, the discussion for a moment, and, and particularly apt as we're at Web Summit, I wondered if there were any new mediums or technologies that you're particularly excited about as, as an actor yeah. that you can see the potential to really develop your creativity, either as a, as, as a, as a filmmaker or an actor? Any, anything that you're excited yes, about? Yes, yes, absolutely. So uh, post-COVID, a lot of actors were having to do their auditions from home, so self-taping. So there were a lot of apps where you were able to record yourself and, you know, that would aid you in being able to put your own, your, your own auditions in front of a camera to send to casting agents and directors. And so I think that was great. That was a great... Um, was, that, was that easy or was that quite awkward? <laughs> no, it wasn't easy, but um, yeah, but it was really helpful. It was really helpful that like once you get to spend some time with it, you know, um, there's another app which is great called Scriptation. Yeah. Which is awesome. It's a scriptation where you can have your script there. Um, there's an option where you can highlight all your lines. Um, you can make notes. You can add attachments to it. So it's great. It just like it really helps you. So yeah. on set, I don't need like a massive script. I can just have my iPad and it has everything I need. Yeah. I, interesting what you said about the sort of remote auditions and that's sounds like a technology that is kind of democratizing a little bit um, yeah. your, your industry, which is a, a good thing. Do, do you think that as a profession, acting or, or film and, and TV needs to do more to engage with other communities or, or yeah. all communities, if you like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and what could be done? What, what do you? I think that everyone has a story to tell, no matter how big, no matter how small. I think it's important to investigate that go into smaller communities, see what's out there, like actually go into the communities, you know, um, and spend time there, spend time in, you know, in Southeast London, spend time in Brixton and get to know the people who are, who are there, you know, selling in the markets and, um, and allow them to have uh, ownership over their stories as well. So that collaborative thing, because some people, they like to capitalize on other people's um, circumstances so but if we can change that capitalizing to collaborating maybe we can find a, a happy medium or a happier medium you're very well traveled and and, um, and, uh, and I wondered if um, there are any sort of new emerging art scenes or performers that you've seen in, in well, it could be in the UK or, or Portugal or, or you in Tanzania recently I think uh, I, I wondered if there was any sort of scenes you'd seen that you're particularly interested in um, well, I was in Tanzania last week and I was invited to visit the, um, the Maasai tribe. And as I visited the Maasai tribe, they welcomed me with, a, with a, their, how do I say, their um, chants and their jubilations. And, and that was beautiful. That was stunning to be welcomed to a community through dance and through, through joy. And um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like on a big stage, it was, you know, just on the land, <laughs> like, you know. Um, so that was an eye opener for you, like yeah. something you hadn't experienced before. Yeah, yeah, that absolutely. Inspired yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. It really inspired me. It's about the community, it's about connecting. It's not, it's not always about the glitz and the glamour, it's about the nuances of the, the, in, the individual or the circumstance, you know. Martin, what's your desert island artwork if you could take one piece of art a film book tv show wow. uh, onto the desert island with you what are you taking uh that's 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 a that's sorry a, that's a <laughs> that's a tough sorry. one <laughs> um well i'm a big kendrick lamar fan so i think maybe i'll take um to pimp a butterfly i'll take that album you take to pimp a butterfly which is kendrick lamar's album and why 
I think because he goes on such a fast journey of healing, redemption, and like um, there's, there's joy, there's, there's passion, there's frustration there. Um, it just has everything. It just feels like it's a whole rounded album about a rose that grew from the concrete. Yeah. You know, and I think that's, um, that's a great image. You're obviously in quite literally one of the biggest TV shows in, in the world. Um, does that add a new level of pressure onto you in, in terms of how you approach your art and how you approach acting? Uh, I'd like to say no. I'm aware of how big the show is, but at the same time, I can't take that on. Like I said, I, you know, I'm not responsible for how the work is received. All I can do is do a good job or try to do a good job and the rest is up to the audience. So, no, I'll say there's no pressure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about um, what's next for you? What are you looking forward to uh, in your career or, or even within the, the, the film yeah. industry and the acting industry? What's next for me? I'm currently filming Bridgerton season three, which is awesome, which will come out sometime next year. No plot spoilers? <laughs> no spoilers. Okay. No spoilers. <laughs> um, and I want to do more work in the States. There's some opportunities to work in, in, in the US. And yeah, I, I really want to get into filmmaking as well. Into filmmaking? Into filmmaking, yeah. Have you ever... Um, I've dabbled. I've dabbled yeah. in directing, but I want to do a bit more, um, a bit more directing, yeah. Have you ever written? Uh, I've written a little bit as well. Yeah. So yeah, a few things in the pipeline, you know. So conquer Hollywood. Conquer Hollywood. <laughs> write an award-winning film, right. obviously. Yeah. Um, oh, and get Bridgerton out the third yeah, series Bridgerton as well out. while you're yeah, at yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Martins, thank you very much indeed yeah. for your thank time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>